And that's the real tea. <laughs> And that's the tea. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, a really, really big welcome. As you can see today, we're going to do a real talk part two. And I have a guest. So this is Maria. <laughs> Hello. Um, she is my friend. Like, she's my first, like, proper friend from Scotland. She's, I've known her for, like, quite a few years. Like... Maybe 10 years, actually? Yeah, I like how you said quite a few years. Yeah, like, I've known her for a decade. <laughs> quite a few years doesn't count A whole it. decade. <laughs> that is true. This is true. A whole decade. But, like, we met on my wedding, didn't we? Yeah. That's just, so funny. I feel like when we tell people that, they're like, what? what? Wait, what? Like, <laughs> You went to her wedding and But it's not it? like that. Like we, like, we were talking all the time. Yeah. And, like, we were really good friends before. Yeah. That. We just didn't have the chance to meet each other before. I feel like we're evidence that online friendships like are real yeah. and well they can be real I know some people be just some weird things but <laughs> we <laughs> yeah, <the internet> kids. <laughs> we had like a real friendship we met on twitter slash tumblr yeah. and yeah like we've just seen each other go through education actually every, everything everything like literally. including marriage like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage as well. <laughs> so yeah, so Mario came all the way to London for my wedding. And then yeah. you, I, you were ill for Abelima, weren't you? So the, the you know bit what? that was in Scotland. I know, so that's so ironic. Like the bit that I was in Scotland that would be easy for me to get to, I was ill. Oh. Like, I had a really bad stomach bug. I remember I was off work yeah. for like the entire week as well. I know. <laughs> I felt so bad. But then I was so happy she'd come for the wedding. And like, thank you for coming all that way because it wasn't. Of course. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we've known each other for a very long time and obviously like now I'm in Scotland we get to see her well we I get to see her like very <laughs> often and like well Farah's also like met her and like we we love nice. Mario Oh. <laughs> We've got churros. I've already eaten one of mine. Sorry guys. Like, <laughs> and we'll go eat one of mine. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah, he was like, oh, I put an extra one for myself. Like, no. You yeah. just get one of <laughs> So these are from Redbury and we thought we'd do a little like girl chat. Real talk slash my bank. Oh, I've got ice creams on now. I know. It's not it's very And you have a milkshake as well. Yeah, I know. Oh my god. <laughs> She's just outing me now. No! <laughs> Honestly. Everybody's like sticks in. Like, no, like, listen, please. listen. If, if she at if she has a job that she has, guys. She's <laughs> like outing me, outing you wear. Like, there's no. Well, I've been like, since I lost some weight, I feel like I can wear jersey scarves and like cut my face every video. It's like, <laughs> like <laughs> no. I'm like, you can't take the jersey scarf. You know what happens? Like I lose a bit of weight or whatever, and then like two weeks later I put it back yeah. on because I've been I've been so excited about the fact that I lost the weight you, you that I let myself, don't you? I like, myself eat whatever yeah. I want, and then I'm like, no, girl, this is literally like, yourself. Is that you? Yeah? Is that you? Is that me? You my like third churro. It's like those tweets when it's like, is this you? Like, yeah, a hundred percent. But you know, we, we are body positive here, and you know, even when we're a bit chubby, we are still we still accept ourselves. Definitely. Actually, <laughs> Mario really into fitness don't you yeah before we get into gym. I miss the gym so when so did you get much. into that um probably about, like two and a bit years ago basically I was doing my diploma um so like for law you do law like before your law degree and then you have to do the diploma to start practicing mm -hmm. and I was doing that and I put on a lot of weight just because some of my classes were finishing at like 8 p.m mm -hmm. so I was like basically just eating out of like Tesco meal deals and just like grabbing anything I could and my like I wasn't exercising at all so I put on a bit of weight and I remember like being on holiday and like do you ever look at, back at pictures and you're yeah. just like I you just feel so disgusting yeah like, I yeah. hated that and I was like I need to make a change so I just started like eating healthy working out and since then I've just been going to the gym mm -hmm. and now I've kind of got like a PT Maya um and it's good yeah that's amazing but, how did you find like transitioning to eating healthy like was your diet before predominantly Asian yeah so before, it wasn't super Asian, like, I'd have a lot of pasta, I think. That was, like, my, mm. carbs were, like, mm. my go-to. I love carbs. The best. <laughs> um, and obviously, like, I really liked rice, mm -hmm. like, palau. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm not a fan of biryani. I know it's a bit controversial. Same. 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 <gasps> Same. I think it's oh, my God. Reason. Palau over biryani any day. 100% Literally. lamb palau. Oh, I don't God. understand the love for biryani. Like, yeah, like, my, to be fair, like, my auntie makes decent biryani, and I like that one, but yeah. anyone else's, I'm like, yeah, it's so like, great. I just don't like the lack of 
trust that I haven't grew around anything it is because there's just one so many bite, bits going on right it. there's loads of bits and then one bite is really plain and then the other bite is like I can't eat now because yeah, I'm on bite so <laughs> spicy and, and then it's just like you just legit. don't know what you're gonna get you're like yeah I just you're playing like no. Russian roulette with Brianna that is like so it's true. just not it's just not what I signed up for that's like, so true just give me a plate of rice with some lamb uh, that's all I need and like, Palau is just so like comforting. it's so wholesome oh. like it's just like proper desi food it's so, I love oh, it I love love. so it, it was difficult to kind of like transition but so did you give it up completely um, or no, were you no, like... no I didn't give up anything completely okay. like to be fair actually for the first month I did go a bit like I didn't eat any junk food or anything like that but then slowly started incorporate, incorporating mm. it back because I can't like you can't cut hard. everything out mm. like it was just impossible and to, like you know me I love going for brunches <laughs> love pancakes like the waffles like churros everything honestly oh my gosh. I have the biggest sweet tooth ever we haven't even mentioned your food page yeah like guys I have the Living at home. biggest <laughs> <laughs> right here she has it yes exactly right there <laughs> um, yeah I have the biggest sweet tooth ever like on Honestly, I can eat chocolate on chocolate on chocolate on chocolate on yeah. chocolate. I feel your pain, girl. <laughs> I feel your pain. And it was really impossible for me to cut everything out. But mm. to be honest, like, even now, I feel like during lockdown, I've done really badly. Like, you think? Just, yeah, like, I just, don't think I've been eating that healthy. Um, I think it's more, not even comfort. I, I'm, it, I'm bored. Yeah. I'm so bored. And do you know what I find do. as well? I find that when you're in a routine for working out, yeah. you want to eat healthy because you're like, I want my food to match my activity 100%, levels. Yeah. And like, that's what, that's what I found when I started working at my sister in laws I was like, the fitter I felt, the more I was like, I want to eat good food and fuel my body. And then as soon as you stop, you're like, uh, well, I'm not, I'm being like bummy anyway. Yeah, so I may as well just eat whatever yeah. I want. But like, at home, like, I have weights, I have, like, you know, a skipping rope uh-huh. and things like that, so I do work out, but it's not the same as, like, going to the gym, getting a proper workout, doing heavy weights, because, yeah. like, the weights I was lifting was were quite heavy before, yeah. and now I'm doing, like, like, relatively light weights, and it's shite. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's actually because you're in that routine of the... the and I actually enjoy going to the gym mm. like I like the process of being in the gym like you know being there and then having it separate from my house I hate that everything is now home like at least for you because you're a teacher yeah. you can actually still go into school yeah. Yeah, with yeah. my job I'm like working from yeah. home working out from home everything is at home yeah it's, it's hard like, to separate them yeah. isn't it? for me I found that when I was working at home out at home uh, by myself I found it really hard but like when it was like with me and my sister and I was we were like holding each other accountable so it was kind of I guess it's kind of like having a PT in yeah. that you've just got someone who knows where you're at that's what and I miss like obviously when I went to my PT I knew that like I've paid for her yeah. so I'm not going to like not go yeah so and also like she's like one of my really good friends now oh, so it's nice, that, nice. Like, I, like going to her like having that chat and also I'd work out in the mornings so I think my routine routine's completely fine. I think that's amazing. Like I just you'd, prefer you'd it. Work because, out before you go to yeah, work. Yeah, so I'd work out before I went to work. So I'd that's go so to the good. gym, then I'd go to, like just shower and everything at the gym and then go to work. And then I could just like go home straight away. And relax. And have that time because you've done with your work. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. So oops. I wish I could do that. Like I'm just not a morning person like that. See, I used to be a morning person and now that I start to work from home. Oh, you I become a night owl. Yeah really badly like I'll go to sleep at two in the morning because I'm like well I only have to wake up five minutes before oh I start work <laughs> and it's so bad I know I know and I'm just like this is like it's, I've gotten to a bad habit I know <laughs> but relatable so relatable <laughs> like, <laughs> like let us know if that's same for you has lockdown changed your routine in any way and if it has is it for the positive or the negative I think some people who um, have only worked from uh who've started working from home they're really enjoying it like how, but some people are like, I need to get back to. Do you know what it is? Like at first, I was like, oh, this is quite nice. Like I can just work from home. I don't need to like drive to work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I quite like talking to people mm. in the office. I like having that kind of chat and like getting up for like a cup of tea or going to the kitchen, and it's nice. And also, like I got along really well with my colleagues, so it's it's like sad yeah. not to have like when you have a good like work. work yeah, yeah, and my team is so nice yeah. as well. So yeah, it's sad not having that. But then at the mm. same time, it's like, well, you can't really help it. Uh-huh. There's a bloody pandemic going on do you ever like I always I always forget about it and then I go to like Insta <laughs> with my mask on and I'm like this is so bizarre yeah it this feels is, like you're in a movie it's, it's so like... bizarre it's so surreal I'll just like I, it doesn't feel real at all it feels like a dream and I'm just like is this actually happening and like this year's gone so fast it's Completely. July yeah <laughs> what on earth what on earth is that crazy about? like That's... it just um I don't know our first topic in this video, apart from what we've just spoken about, is going to be 
<laughs> like what we look for in a partner. If you've got any other suggestions for topics for future videos, we want to film again because she's such a natural, you guys. Like, <laughs> she is. She's amazing. And I'm sure you love her accent just as much as I do. So definitely leave it in the comments below like what you want to see us talk about because yeah. we were kind of trying to think about what we wanted to talk about and there's so many things, but we just want to hear from you like what you want to yeah. hear. Like we can talk for ages yeah. and about anything, <laughs> but I feel like there's no point if you're not no. going to be interested in it. Exactly, exactly. And like, it's difficult to do like something about like a lot of people suggested marriage yeah and it's difficult to do that because you're married and i'm not so yeah. i'm just gonna be like <laughs> hey guys <laughs> let's start with the top three should we be superficial and start with physical traits or do you want to go for characteristics let's do okay we can do physical first you can go first <laughs> i feel like you're well, just gonna have to describe the guard yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be <laughs> awkward if I No, I think for me, the first thing that I would notice is probably arms. That's the first thing. A skinny guy is not for me. Yes. I I don't not... mind like uh, like slim. Slim is good, but skinny. Like if I feel like I've got bigger it. arms than you, it's a no. Like it's just a no. Do like, you know what I don't like? Like I've got quite like big thighs, same. and I feel like if a guy has smaller thighs, yeah. I hate that. Oh my, that's like what do we do now? For me, like a good pair of arms and yeah. not not too skinny I think yeah. um I don't mind height too much I used to think like yeah. I w I'd want like a really tall husband and I think sometimes the height height difference can be cute but then I'm like practically that would annoy me that I feel like a really tall guy would just like always be like pop and then I would just be like I could <laughs> like, I can't pat you back on the head so now what <laughs> so <laughs> where do we go where do we go from here like, like it's not gonna work <laughs> so with me and Wakara like you guys know like we've got a very small height difference and I, I like that because you know we're at we're at some I think it's good, yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Is that three? I think arms like a decent ish I wouldn't want I, I personally wouldn't want someone shorter than me, but I wouldn't mind someone yeah. the same size. You're quite tall though. Yeah, I'm five seven, so yeah, that's a bit tricky. Five three gang. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. And then facial wise, a beard. Like, I'm sorry, if there's no beard, then I'm no. the same. I need the beard. That would be my first one. Beard. Yeah. I love a beard. Like, they're just. I feel like guys are very childish. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Even a man, if you don't have a Do beard. Do you know, we were saying this in the car. Like, if you're already going to be acting like a kid and then you're not going to have a beard and you're going to look like a kid, then you're not ready for you're marriage, not really mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm signing that in a car contract, but like, I know. And listen, those of you who are out there who can't grow beards, we're not coming for you, okay? We understand some people have. But really get on that castor oil because what are you playing at? Like, seriously. <laughs> put, it, put it on your face every night. Every night. Yep. Yeah. Make it a regime. Mm. Yep. And before you know it, hashtag not sponsored. Beard would be my first one. A nice smile, definitely. Like, oh. that gets me. What else? Oh, nice hands. I look at hands. Oh, really? Yeah, I like nice hands. Like Okay, what's a nice hand to you? Do you guys know what I mean when guys just have those like veiny kind of like nice mm. hands? A physical trait. What about like characteristics now? I think for like a partner, like realistically, if you're looking for a partner, especially being an Asian Muslim girl, it's going to be like for the long haul, you know, long term. So for marriage. And for marriage, <laughs> if you want, you'd want someone who is uh, trustworthy. Definitely. Like, you wouldn't want to have to be questioning anything about them. Yeah. And if there's anything that seems off about them, I feel like you should listen to your instinct mm. straight away. Gut feeling. Because your gut feeling is there for a reason. Like, you don't just get that for no reason. Don't ignore the red flags. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, a guy could have a beard, nice arms, <laughs> perfect height. And then if he's got, like, even a few red flags, that's it. I and feel like a lot of people act colorblind when yeah. you, like, start talking to a guy. And you're like, come on. Yeah, absolutely. And be honest with your friends and talk to them about it and accept their opinion as well. Because then they're never really going to sabotage you and be like, yeah, no, he's not good. If he's not good. If, yeah. if they're saying something, they're saying it for a reason. Yeah, 100%. But I've also been the friend who's been not that keen on a friend's boyfriend before. And then, and then also oh. like, how do I... Uh... It's a very sensitive <laughs> topic because obviously yeah. like if that friend loves your boyfriend and you're just sitting there being like a loser yeah. the loser then it's gonna be like okay but why did you think that yeah. and what's he ever done to you but he treats me so right and it's difficult because sometimes your friends will only tell you like the bad things yeah. about the relationship and they'll never be yeah. like oh he did this and this he did that and, and it's like you have to take it with a pinch of salt yeah yeah this is and true. so you can't really like go at them and be like you shouldn't be together because yeah of this, that, and the other. have you ever said to a friend that you're not that you're not on the same page with them with their partner yeah you have yeah and I how have. was that conversation 
I think they kind of knew that what I was saying was true, but it was difficult because I was at that stage where, like, it was quite early on mm. in the relationship as well. In a way, that's good because you've yeah. been able to before feelings get too cemented. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I was right. Like, we didn't end up working out, okay. which was for the better. But yeah. I think it's just really tough because... It's bit, but when you start off in a relationship, you're in that kind of honeymoon period yeah. and you're so happy and blah, blah, blah. And I think it should be so nice at that point mm-hmm. instead of being mm-hmm. like, why Why are you having drama already? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, that absolutely. is a red flag in itself. Yeah. Don't be with someone, like, as soon as you're with them, there's, like, all this drama. And all this. You need to kind of think to yourself, like, this is not worth it. Yeah. Because in the long run, if you're having these arguments, like, from day one, mm-hmm. what's it going to be, like, two months down the line, yeah. a year down the line? Exactly. Like, it's not okay. Absolutely. And trustworthy in every aspect, so no little white lies, because little white lies... Those are, are the worst, to... I think. I think, because people find them so easy to, mm. like, you know, tell. Like, little mm. white lie here, there, and then next thing you know, you've got this big backstory yeah. of, like, white lies. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. just the worst. It's just, like, where do we go from here then? Yeah. Like, like you've, so you've been yeah. lying to me this whole time. Yeah, Sometimes little, little things, but... Absolutely. It sabotages the relationship, I think. Absolutely. And then I guess, like, in a positive sense, a good listener, which I know can be hard with men, they do struggle with that sometimes, but... Yeah. <laughs> like, somebody Communication's who... key. Yeah. Like and that's hard. Do you know what? Like when you're looking for a partner at a young age, that's hard, because I feel like we as women are just naturally gifted to be like, like good communicators. We're very. We have a lot of empathy as yeah. well. I think. As yeah. Women. We've got softer hearts. Yeah. I think just with our own friends, you'll see like a group of like even as a teacher, like kids, you'll see like girls consoling each other. Yeah. But if there's been an argument with boys, they're just like, mm, oh, get over mm, it. Oh. No, we're yeah, not. and push and each then, other about. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like, and then when it comes to like talking about feelings, like as a, as a mediator, I'm like, so how do you think that makes so and so feel? And they're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and they won't even try. And so, if, I don't know, I'm talking about like 10 year olds here, but it just sometimes doesn't get much better when you get older. It, like, it's hard. It really, yeah. Men take a while to mature. Like, I'll say that with my chest. Men it so hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, like, they lack maturity. <laughs> they do lack maturity. And I feel like they just don't know how to talk about their feelings. Because I've, like, got a group of friends that are guys and stuff like that. And I'm always like, why don't you guys, like, ever talk about how you feel? And that you're like, oh, we don't need to. Like, we don't, we don't talk about that. And you're just like, what? And you're, yeah, like, we don't talk about those things. What do you talk about then? <laughs> It's strange. Like it's I feel, really odd. feel like we're it's twenty twenty. Like yeah. there's and I always see things on like Twitter and stuff. Like a guy's committed suicide and none of his friends knew. It's like, well, why didn't you guys? Yeah. Know? Check up on your friends, yeah. guys. You're not like, gonna check up. Yeah. <laughs> and not saying that only guys commit suicide, but actually the mouth suicide. It's like, really high. Statistic is really high. A good communicator, but I do acknowledge that that sometimes takes time. Even within a marriage, like afterwards, that takes time to yeah. develop and like understand. Just depends on how like you gel. Like, throughout your marriage as well. Yeah. And the circumstances going on around you. Yeah. And, like, I think you have to cut each other slack. But then also, you have to keep putting in effort. But anyway, this is not about marriage. This is about the build-up to marriage. But <laughs> having said that, if you're not communicating well from the start, then it's a pretty sure sign, I think, that that's going to continue to be an issue. Yeah, yeah. I think you have to have a, a decent decent communication. Uh, decent to good, I would say. Communication is key. Like. Yeah. Because if you're upset about something, like, you want to be able to talk to your partner. Yeah. You want your partner to be able to be like, okay, so what can I do yeah. to um, help? Like, what can I do that will make you feel better? Absolutely. Or what are the next steps that we have to take? Instead of someone, I think with men, they get very, like, defensive. Yes. I think you say ego. something to them. Yeah, they have big ego. It's ego. true. Yeah, absolutely. Like you say something to them, and they're like, okay, but you did this. Mm. okay but like I did this last week and like you didn't even say thank you and it's just like we're not talking about that hang on where did last week come from yeah. I'm talking about now <laughs> I feel like they just kind of like start pulling things mm. from like you know air, the air and they're just like oh my god like you did this and you did that and it's just like okay well you should have spoken about that at the yeah time exactly upset. exactly and I think men just they just get so defensive yeah. and it's like and you're just like whoa like all I want to do is tell you that you've upset me yeah. and just like don't let yourself be like a lot of men like to gaslight women Mm. I think that's really like that's something is really important to understand yeah. before you start the getting into a serious relationship. Yeah, because I think a lot of men are like we'll that's in your head. Here. <laughs> <laughs> a lot but, of men will be like, oh, that's in your head. Like, no, no, you're just being a psycho, and like you kind of start oh, to believe it. That you're word, just about like, oh my god, okay, maybe I am being a bit silly. Like, yeah, maybe that was over the top. But, or like, see when men bring like hormones into it, so oh, they're like, are you in your period? Are you in your period? Oh, is it that time? And it's just like you can't let men treat us like that. Especially yeah. like when you're thinking, like, can this man be the one that I want to spend the rest of my yeah. life with? You have to, no. like, don't settle. 
I think in the Asian community, marriage is so like you have to get married by this age, and if you're not married yeah. by this age, then oh God help you, you're never yeah, going to be like man. you'll pass yourself. You're never going to be able to get pregnant, blah blah blah. And let me tell you, those aunties who are telling you that are probably like so depressed. miserable. Yeah, they're miserable. so miserable in their marriage. You know, like and all they care about is the next thing, the next couple, the next young person. Yeah. Why are you not doing this? It's like focusing your. They're basically baby. living through you. Yeah. What's your third? I'm trying to think. So it's a good listener. Uh, a sense of humour as yes. well. Oh my God, yeah. 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 And someone who gets your humour. So if you've got like a dry sense of humour, then they should have the same. Yeah. And or just someone who understands yeah. it. Like not even necessarily have the same. Like as long yeah. as you guys can like kind of bounce off each yeah. other's humour, I think that's the best Yeah, because life is so like mundane sometimes and so also stressful sometimes. Yeah. So if you can't, if you don't have a partner who can make you laugh forget about yeah. the hardship sometimes or what's you the need point? someone to like it. be able to laugh yeah. at basically and the same. I think humour sense of humour 100% yeah. I agree that'd be my first one trustworthy again mm-hmm. did you say that? yeah but that's true like I think I think that should be 100%, like 100% I agree like I wouldn't want to be with someone who I didn't trust wouldn't mm-hmm. want to be with someone who made me feel like I'd always have to check up on them oh my gosh yeah like yeah. you know I've been in a situation like that before it's not fun it's just not fun when you feel like it's such a waste of energy it's draining yeah it's It's draining and half the time you're right about your instincts Mm. as well which is like the worst part and what would my third one be characteristic someone who just is understanding i think yeah understanding Mm -hmm. i think Mm -hmm. just someone who can like if i'm if i talk to them tell them how i feel tell them i don't like something it doesn't just like throw it back in my face someone who just kind of like okay how can i make this better or okay like yeah i'm glad you spoke about that let's talk about it mm. not someone who just like can't stand that like tip for tap yeah i hate that yeah. like we're adults we don't need absolutely that. like that's not i don't think that's how any relationship absolutely work. no and friendship no like you know yeah. family relationship type thing it should be like understanding between both parties not just oh, yeah. tip for tat, like you did this i'm gonna do that or um you know yeah it's petty it's just unnecessary oh, and it's like we pet- don't need that in yeah. our lives we're just like we're grown women yeah <laughs> grown adults like that's just and I just I feel like as women we have enough to deal with oh yeah literally like oh. all the things we go through on a month to month basis <laughs> um you know as and then we do all that whilst maintaining our careers or our education our family lives we do so much mashallah that it's like why should then your partner and the person that you want to marry be draining you like if, if that person is draining I think I recently on Twitter where it's like if someone is leaving you exhausted and like like you look ill because of how you feel because of them then it's definitely not the one for you like I think we're so like again we're so um pressured in the Asian community to yeah. be like you need to get married by this age blah blah, blah. We'll, people will just settle yeah. for anyone yeah. girls start shooting your shot for the men you want like absolutely. honestly just slide yeah. into the DMs absolutely legit I saw this thing on Twitter and it was like girls just start shooting their shot mm. more often because they always end up settling for guys and you know what Islamically like that's not wrong because like Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's first wife she shot her shot <laughs> if I can say that and if she can do it so <laughs> yeah <laughs> like those are like our ultimate role models right yeah. like the way they live their lives is like close to perfect if not perfect so but she saw a man who was so much younger than her, but had all the qualities that she wanted in a husband. Yeah. So what she, do you think about that though? Like, like, like a girl I think that's into? amazing. I think it's great, but I think that girls also, I, I think with social media, like, because I didn't meet with her on social media, I do. I, I kind of like see a lot of like back and forth on the TL, you know, between young like men <laughs> and women, and I'm like, oh, that's cute. But I'm also like, I hope you know more than just what they're putting out there because yeah, with social, social media, media is so deceiving, right? Like so we deceiving. only put out a window. Of what and we people want often to see. like I've seen people get like cancelled. I'm not a fan of cancel culture. Mm-hmm. I think it's just like eye roll. But like yeah. You always see people getting cancelled in the TL, and like there's always a new yeah. person each week, especially on Muslim Twitter. Oh, like, like the oh drama. <laughs> I can't. I, that's why I kind of moved to like blogger Twitter. Ain't <laughs> where it's at, guys. It's not where it's at. <laughs> but it's just like a lot of guys, from what I've seen, is that like, they'll be talking to one girl, but they'll also be talking to ten other girls. But yeah. that, that, but like none of those girls will know. But at the same time, they'll be like preaching on their t- yeah. like, timeline yeah. about Islam and like. You know, I personally the, think you should stay away from preachers. Oh yeah, they're the guys worst. who preach. Guys who quote like no. um, 
what's she call it hadiths and things like yeah. that constantly yeah. and like also guys are like this is what you should expect for like from in a woman and yeah. like, blah 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 just guys who talk about women and their hijab or lack of hijab or oh their gosh. makeup videos or I really irritated and it's like you've got 24 hours in a day and you're going to spend some of those precious hours like talking about women why I think like <laughs> I've never seen like in a community like honestly it's always the Asian brown men that get so triggered about what yeah. brown girls are wearing and it's so embarrassing and you're just like is it not so embarrassing you it's actually like, not have anything else to do no. with your life why like, don't a you job work. go help your mum yeah go to the kitchen learn to cook and you know, do your, your mum's probably in the kitchen like slaving away and you're just sat on your phone tweeting about how women are trash yeah. mm, okay why don't you pick up your socks <laughs> put them in the wash learn how to use the washing machine prepare yourself for Honestly, marriage <laughs> Literally, like, there's always the men who are like babies by their mums as well yeah. that act like that and you're yeah. just like okay. yeah. as Asian women now of this generation I feel like if and when we're blessed with sons we will raise them so differently oh yeah so yeah. so differently whereas I don't, I don't think like this is not shade mum if you're watching this this is not shade to you <laughs> I feel like Haseeb was like raised quite fairly I've got one brother and there's three of us girls so he was raised quite fairly I would say like it wasn't a big difference between him and us really no that's good no there wasn't a hundred like, that's not common yeah yeah Usually guys get away with anything although I would say we were probably expected to help in the kitchen more yeah until he went to uni and then when he got back from uni he actually wanted to cook because he was like he was cooking there so when he come back he'd be like yeah I'll, I'll cook dinner tonight and then that even that was like <laughs> oh, he seems gonna cook, and it's like, but he cooks like every day to survive. So yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I think it's very strange that guys don't learn how to cook. Like it's a basic yeah. skill. Yeah. It's so do you have a brother? Cook. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I have a brother. And does he know how to cook? Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. And like he went through this phase of like wanting to cook. <laughs> Did he? That's good. That's really yeah, good. And he knows like he's actually a better cook than me. Yeah. Hell and better. He's such a good cook and. He makes good food it's and amazing. yeah, like and also he went through like the whole health hype as well. I think it's that's brilliant. when guys yeah. start taking it seriously yes. when they're like, yeah, I need to cook for myself because I want to eat healthy. Yeah, come away from the Asian diets, which can be like yeah, really yeah, unhealthy. exactly. Yeah. But to be honest, like um, my family the same is the same. Like my brother was raised pretty fairly, that's like me that's as well. Good. But we're lucky. Like, we're the lucky ones. Yeah, we're the <laughs> lucky ones. Because I know of families where like the brothers don't do anything and their moms like wait on the hand and foot. But it's like, what kind of man are you raising for his future wife? Because then she's going to have a man child to deal with. Like, I'm, Alhamdulillah, I'm really lucky for anyone to like, start thinking. Wakar is, is yeah. and can be very independent. Like, especially when we're living alone, he would do everything for himself and then he would help me as well. Because I was working full time, so I wasn't going to come yeah. home and then cook a, a full, like, two course, three course meal and then do the washing and whatever. Like, no, I, I that's ridiculous. Yeah. But I think so many times Asian women just do that, just go with it. Yeah. And it's such a shame. I just, I don't know how they do it. I think Asian women are just... Incredible. Just, they have so much yeah. strength. Absolutely. But I'm also, why are you allowing this to happen? Yeah. You know, like, the more maybe, women that then, allow it to happen, like, the yeah. more generations it's going to yeah. go on and on. And I think, actually, with our generation, we're pretty, like, solid to yeah, be, like, yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. not. We're all, like, on the same page, yeah. where it's, like, I if, think, if a man and a woman are working then a man and a woman should be contributing to the house in every way. It should just be split fairly. Yeah. Like the chores should be split Absolutely. fairly. Cooking should be split fairly. Like Absolutely. nobody wants to be constantly cooking. Nobody wants no. to be constantly cleaning. Like if you're going to work a full time yeah. job and come home and you have to do all the cleaning and all the cooking, like Yeah. You're just gonna start like hating your marriage as well. Yeah. Gonna, and so like, like in that sense, try and I don't wanna say like fish, but like try and get a sense of the ma- the guy you're speaking to, like how much he does around the house. Yeah. Because he could potentially lie, but I don't think. Uh, generally, I, I think they'd be honest. Like, oh no, I don't really cook. Or, I, never I cook. think yeah, I guys are quite cook. honest with that. They're quite honest, and like, and then that will give like, you a sign. They think it's almost like cute. Like, yeah, I don't know how to cook. Hi, yeah. you can cook for me. Like, absolutely not. I'm not your mom. No pal. Absolutely not. No pal. Cook for yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> like, I I like cooking now, but when I'm when I've worked and I have to come home and cook, I I'm not in a good mood. Oh <laughs> By the God. end of the night, if no one's helped me, I'm not in a good mood. So like even here, so my family, like my in laws and stuff, like I will ask for guys to come and help me. I'll be like, look, you can come and do this and this and this, and then when we're clearing up, you do this, this and Absolutely. this. Absolutely. And he doesn't mind because he can see that I'm tired. I've just been at work and. Look, I'm providing a meal. Like, alhamdulillah, like obviously, you know, it's, it's it's a blessing to be able to do that. But it's also a blessing to have a husband who's got 
legs and arms that can work and he can help yeah. as well you know like we, we both it doesn't work. take a lot like even if your husband was like prepping and stuff like even if he did the prepping and then yeah. you came home and you just have to put everything together yeah. like that would help too yeah, it's absolutely. literally just like the tiny little things that yeah. would make a relationship easier and I think it is hard being Asian because a lot of men have been brought up in a certain way but that doesn't, maybe. that doesn't mean that once you're married that's it like you have to accept that yeah. but also it doesn't mean that they're radically going to change well, not radically, but they're just going to suddenly change and become domestic, amazing yeah. house husbands. You need to know what you're getting into. So yeah. if you know yourself, you're getting into a marriage with a guy who's like been raised in a way that his mum's always babied him and always put like, you mm-hmm. know, made up his plate and put it on the table for him and then taken yeah. it away for him, then you're going to have to really understand that like you're going to have to work really hard yeah. to get him out of that habit. Absolutely. And you have to make it clear to him beforehand, like, I know your mum's done all this for you, but I'm not going to do yeah. that for you. That's what my job. And if that, yeah, and if that's, that's a wrong. problem, then this shouldn't go ahead. Yeah. And also then, ultimately, your own children are going to learn that, oh, dad doesn't do anything, so why should we? Yeah. And then you're going to end up doing everything for everyone. You're going to be on your own. Yeah. And that's just not a life that anyone should have to live. No. So, I agree. Yeah. Oh, it's annoying. Like, it's the bare minimum. Literally. Like, it's knowing how to cook is the bare minimum. And I hate it when, like, people are like, oh, my God, my man knows how to cook. Like, good. He should know how to yeah. feed himself. He well should done. know how to survive. <laughs> like, like... He's saying the bare minimum. I know. Like, I know. That's what annoys me too when girls or women hype up that their men like are babysitting yeah. the kids and they call it babysitting. Oh my god. No, hen. You're just looking after your child. Yes, it's like, your child. Yeah. It's your you literally half Baby your child. Babysitting weird. Half of your chromosomes <laughs> Honestly, are in that child. Yeah, I'm like, what, what do you mean he's got the kids tonight? What do you mean he's babysitting? Like, he's just looking after yeah. his child. And meanwhile, homeboy is out with his boys like every other night of the week. And no. one night a week in a month, he's babysitting. No, like, we are worth so much more than that. But then that this is why in that talking stage you have to kind of suss out so you much. You need to establish where you're both at. And do you know what? You have to do it before you catch feelings. Hundred percent. Because as soon as you caught feelings, you're gonna start making excuses. Yeah, for this like behavior. like we said, like you're not gonna like notice the red flags. No, no. Or or you, or you like, will, but you're like it's fine. It's gonna change. change when we get married. Yeah. Oh, and then you're married and it's not changed, and then there's the argument. And really, you and dug yourself into that hole. Yeah. So it's like you gotta you gotta know that you're on the same sort of page, and you have got the same kind of like life life views. I think. Yeah. Again, it comes back to like you don't have to say so. No, no matter what age you are. No. If you're thirty and you think you found the right guy, but he t- turns out there's something he does you don't like. Just get him in the bin. Just put him right <laughs> in the bin. Honestly, just <laughs> bring him in, leave him there. Rubbish men will take care of him. Like, there's absolutely. absolutely no need for you to feel like you need to settle. Like, absolutely. There's so many guys out it's there. It's way better to be oh. like single and wait and work on yourself yeah. for the right person than yeah. to just settle, like jump into something and then Do be like... Do you know like, what I hate when people say that when, you're, when they're like, oh, you're so picky? Yeah, of course I'm going to be picky. This is the person yeah. I'm going to spend the people. rest of my yeah. life with. Yeah. Like obviously, I'm exactly. Picky. Exactly. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Exactly. Be picky. Don't wait. Don't settle. <sighs> yeah. Ever. And I think a lot of the times that comes from older generation people who yeah. had arranged marriages. So they're like, in a way, in their head, it's like we didn't get a choice. So you've got a choice. So like, why can't you choose someone? But it's like, whoa, well, because because all the people I'm choosing are trash. Yeah. The caliber of men is just not as good as you might just think. Trash. <laughs> Insert trash pictures. Literally, <laughs> literally. Like, I will, I will try that again. <laughs> but, like, honestly, girls, I think the main thing is don't settle, know your worth. That's the thing, though. Like, I always see the most stunning, beautiful girls and, like, even from the inside as well, settle for, like, guys who are just the worst. Like, and I don't even mean, like, looking wise I just mean like yeah Yeah. like they just have the worst characteristics and I'm just like what's going on here for you to have settled for something like this like it's just it was was sad don't do it it's not worth it it's it's not worth it it's not worth it girl and how about family wise would you want a family man yes 100% 100% I think I'm so close with my family and like I always go out with my family and have family days and things like that so I think I would love that with like Mm -hmm. my potential Mm -hmm. husband or whatever could you see yourself living with in-laws in the future? Uh, Controversial know. topic. Uh, <laughs> basically, like, I don't think it's as bad as people yeah. say it is. I think as long as, like, you have your boundaries, and I think the main problem is both parties don't talk to each other beforehand. Mm. So I think you should have that talk be like, this yeah. is what we expect from you, yeah. this is what I expect from you, and take it from there, yeah. and there should be compromises Absolutely. and stuff like that. Absolutely. I think that's the most important part. I think for me, like, I wouldn't mind living with my in-laws if it was to, like, save money and stuff. Mm-hmm. But if I was in the position to, like, 
buy my own house and like stuff I would rather yeah. that yeah and I think my like my nightmare before I started thinking about getting married was to be married to someone who had a really controlling either parent or sibling and then it'd be like you're trying to compete and I've seen marriages fall apart with that yeah. where like actually the couple were really good together but then like the the mother-in-law or the father-in-law they wouldn't let them go on holidays and really? like yeah wow. yeah and it's just really horrible you hear about because... that stuff all the time and it's it's a shame because it's like you accepted this woman into your life to marry your son yeah. But now you're not going to let them live life as adults. Like, that's... Yeah, yeah that's, He's still your son, but that doesn't mean that now he just can't live his life. Just because he's married to someone else doesn't take away from yeah. the fact that, like, he's still your son. Yeah. I think people just don't understand that concept. And I think people think when they've gained, like, a daughter-in-law, they've gained a slave and someone... Oh, my God, like, I hate that. I hate that mentality. It just it upsets me because I've heard stories about yeah. that before. And that's, yeah. like, originally what would put me off because I'm, like... I don't want to have a, a bad relationship with my in-laws. Yeah. And I feel like at the best of times, I clash with my own family. Yeah. So everyone like, does. We all And do. it's fine to we be able do. to say like whatever you want to your family yeah. because they're very forgiving. But your in-laws are going to remember no, everything you say. That's going to stick. Even yeah. if they, even if you can move past it. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't want to ever have an outburst with your in-laws. And I'm very hot-headed. Like, very hot-headed, very sharp tongue. Like, I... Yeah. <laughs> my, my parents would agree. They'd be like, so are you going to to say you want to? <laughs> like, I just... Like, in my own house, in my parents' house, I'm, like, pretty different, I would say, like, to here. But then I think you do, when you when you are in a position where you are staying with your in-laws, you do adapt and change as well. Yeah. Like, you have to. Like, I think but there needs do. to be change from both yeah. sides. Yeah. Because also, absolutely. like, you have to understand that, like, this girl has moved from her family home yeah. into another family home. Yeah. And sometimes it's a big distance. Like, absolutely. you moved a big yeah. distance. Sometimes yeah. it's, a, like, even bigger distance than that. Like, I've known people who've moved from actual... So one of my friends used to live in Morocco and she moved to Glasgow. Oh my yeah. gosh, wow. That's a big distance. Wow. And, okay, she doesn't and the climate change yeah. as well. On top of that, like from the sun to the change. rain. Literally. But I think it's, just, it's difficult and there yeah. needs to be that understanding of Definitely. like this girl is going to take some time to you adjust, know, adjust and to gel with the family as yeah. well. Because like obviously you've never spent so much time with them before. Alhamdulillah, I'm so lucky in that sense. Every, like no one put any pressure on me to do anything for ages. Until the point where I was like, can I start helping now like <laughs> I don't know if you want to test me it's like that but... awkward stage where like no one wants to say anything to yeah, you and no one would ever say anything to literally. you but you're just like I can help you yeah. guys like, especially because I wasn't working I was yeah. just bored I was like I'm really bored in the house and I'm in the house bored but yeah I'm so, I've been like so so blessed yeah, because really you nice. hear all these horror stories and it's just you just don't know yeah. I guess until you're living in that situation because even even like the first time you meet someone doesn't necessarily mean that that's how they... Although you can sometimes think of that. Do you know what freaks me out? Like, I've heard stories about, like, people being together for the longest time and then they get married and they just, like, it doesn't work. Like, as in, like, they're together for so long, it's fine. Like, they get married like, and, it, and there's nothing to do with in-laws. It's just them. Yeah. And then they just don't work. And I'm do you know like, what? <laughs> Can no, I bring Islam you. into this again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you, like, Islamically, right, it is that when, if you're, like, in a like relationship before marriage which a lot of people are then shaitan's trying to keep you guys together right because technically like islamically that's the wrong thing even though if you're doing like if you're in the relationship for marriage it's for marriage your intentions there and like at the end of the day god can see your intentions but then the moment you get married shaitan's job is to like try and pull you apart and i had done this well right and i was like nah, that's, oh my nah i don't think so but then it made so much sense the arguments that you have afterwards can be so petty it's so trivial and yeah, yeah. and it's like before you would never have argued about that like that would be so ridiculous oh and of, of course sometimes it's like you're spending so much more time with them because like in your face all the time yeah. but it is when it, when i had someone tell me that i was like this makes so much sense that's crazy I've never... and then i was like go away shit down <laughs> I was like, go away. literally i was like i'm going to read my emails and pray against you because <laughs> i don't you know you want your marriage to like be strong but shaitan literally is out is out to destroy marriages Damn. yeah he Bring never rests <laughs> never like, never oh the devil works hard <laughs> does this literally. guy not get annual leave like yeah. he needs to honestly take a deal ramadan but mm. even then it's like the initials <laughs> Like away. That's just us. <laughs> I know. We've given our own personal preferences. Let us know what you guys think, though. Yeah. Like on anything we've said. Would you actually one last thing question? Would you look for someone who is strong in their own culture? Is that important to you? As in, like, what do you mean? Like they're very like like orientated more around their culture than they are Islam. <sighs> no, but like they've got 
they got a good understanding of the culture, like they can maybe like speak the language, teach your children the language. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I think that's nice. Yeah. Like for me, I grew up and my dad was not like he grew up in Scotland, so he wasn't very like cultured. Yeah, I didn't, more I didn't yeah, yeah, I didn't grow up like watching Bollywood movies. I knew no like Bollywood songs. Anytime I'd go to like we had these family friends and anytime I'd go to their house and they'd be talking about like the new Bollywood movie, they'd be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And oh it would make God. me feel like an outsider. Do you know what? Same actually. Yeah. I think I remember watching three Bollywood movies. That's it. I think repeat. only now, like at this yeah. age, I've watched the classics, like the... Gavri Chubigam. Yeah. Gal Ho Yeah. And Beer Zara. Yeah. Legit. Oh my God, I love Beer Zara though. That's, Beautiful. that's a class movie. Right. And the songs nice. in that movie. Really but yeah, cool. I didn't grow up watching it. Yeah, and, and like, I feel like I was very like, yeah. everyone would always call me a coconut and hate that term. Right? Because all the Asians at school would be like vibing to the songs I was like I don't know what and I'd be like I'm sorry is this a new song and it's like well, literally it was out at my dad's wedding like no it's not a new song and I'd be like oh, okay okay like, I don't know anything I, I know I can't read like, <laughs> but yeah like I think someone who's into their culture 100% yeah like, I love that and I love to raise my kids like you know around their culture and I yeah. think that's really nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's important. I wouldn't want someone who's over the top and would pick culture over Islam because I think mm. that's just wrong. I know a lot of people do that. Mm. A lot of people think, um, a lot of people get confused with culture and Islam. Yeah, I think yeah, the definitely. older generation, Absolutely. I think mostly. Absolutely. But I don't like that and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't go for that. But I think someone who is, yeah. Cultured. Yeah, I like it. What about you? Yeah, and well, well with me. <laughs> yeah, so I think yeah, I think Wakar is pretty cultured. Like he is been focused on a lot more than me, and he re- like he actually would move there if he could. Would he? Yeah, and I'm like, I think a lot of people have started started to do that. Like a lot of people from yeah. The thing is, if you've got the money, the quality of life there is really it's nice. Amazing. But for me, I just feel like I wouldn't fit in because it's just a different I feel like it's very classist it's, there yes. very classist right I hate and that. even though we're from Britain so technically we're like upper class right because we're, we're not we're, you know we've already got the accents I don't feel my attitudes and my views match that upper class mentality no it's very I think it's very different yeah it's very and much. then and like they have like kitty parties and like all these sort of things and it's like I <laughs> not for me <laughs> can't like I like dressing up but not to like you know, I don't know, and, just, and I don't want to watch it judgmental because I know some people just, might watch this and might might like that. But for me, it, yeah, it's a personal opinion. Yeah, it's a personal don't get opinion. Triggered. <laughs> it's, it's not that. Deep. No, it's not that deep. <laughs> so, but yeah, like culture is important, definitely. I mean, for like for me, I was probably the only sibling who can like have a decent conversation. I see can kind of as well, but in Urdu, but. Just I about. embarrassingly cannot speak Urdu. So, and neither can my sister. I can understand everything. Urdu, Punjabi, like everything. I can understand everything, but I just cannot speak. And yeah. I think it's because I went to... This is a story I tell everyone. So <laughs> in nursery, I went in and I could speak fluent Urdu because oh like, I'd always talk and I was like a three-year-old talking Urdu oh, to everyone. Cute. And I was just confused, like, why is no one talking to me in, in Urdu? And everyone's talking to other languages. Well, which is ironic. I know it's ironic because both my mum and dad speak English, so I don't know why oh I was the one talking. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, so I think they must have like been speaking Just, to me in Urdu, yeah. so like so yeah. I can pick it up because I yeah, knew yeah, yeah. they probably knew that I'd learn how to speak English in nursery. Once you get, so yeah. I went and nobody was talking to me, so I think I got traumatized, and now I just don't. Or so just not <laughs> so guys, don't do that to your heads. <laughs> I think it's nice to try and raise your kids kind of bilingual. I say that um, to my mum. I'm always like, please talk to me in Urdu so I can pick things up. Yeah. But from, like, it's hard now. It I is. I feel like it's, it's so really hard. hard. My dad hard. was like, because he's what he's, my dad's from Pakistan, so my mum would be like, can you speak to them in Urdu? And he'd be like, well, I want to improve my English. <laughs> Like, I'm gonna improve. So and he's like, yeah, you say that, but it's like, Dad, your English is perfectly fine. <laughs> and I think you, you just get in the habit like, of it. I feel like um, parents who are born in Pakistan, like my mom was born in Pakistan, I feel like they are just quite, um, what's the word? They're not confident in their yeah. English, even though my mom's English is so good. Yeah. But they're just not confident yeah. in it, and I think that's probably why you yeah. want to really, like. Yeah, which, which makes sense. Because obviously, I, I also think it's a bit controversial, but I do feel like if you've been living in the UK, for like five years plus, you should make an effort to learn English. Yeah. And like, I know there's a lot of women, and I will say this, Pakistani women who don't. And it's like, why? Why do you just rely on your children and your husband to translate for you? I mean, if you're home and you've got the internet, there's so many like resources out there for you to like start learning. I think now, like it's a lot 
it's a lot easier to learn. Yeah, you absolutely. don't actually have to go out your way and go and to like speak to people. And and, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and I think it's also just really important in terms of, for example, like if there's an emergency, an ambulance came, your husband was out, then how can you communicate? To yeah, them? it's difficult. Yeah, like even with COVID, I didn't think about this, but like, um, but you know the the fact that B A M E BAME groups have been like dying mo- much yeah, more in yeah. high percentage. I've, people have been saying it's because a lot of the times, like the communication isn't been there, which is like really scary. It's like it's really bad. that lack of language and being able to speak. Um, but then I guess like, like when I go back to Pakistan, like my family there are kind of just like, like looking at my <laughs> sisters, like, are you guys up to again? And they're, they're just like. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I also all I do inshallah, G Alhamdulillah, yeah. mashallah. And my my sisters had the garam tanda. <laughs> they were like, as long as we can say garam tanda, G name, we're good. <laughs> Nay, G, like honestly, that, that will get you through a good conversation. Well, exactly, like you want this hot this food, G, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I think culture is an interesting one but yeah someone who's too cultural as well that can be a bit annoying because sometimes it's ingrained in them then yeah and, and they and don't like can, they can't move away from no, it no I don't like that either and it's like you have to you can't be like and also oh what do you think oh, well we're going into different terms yeah, of the here. <laughs> but like just quickly how do you feel about patriotic people uh, like I feel like the Scottish are very patriotic too late. <laughs> Sorry. First of all, imagine, imagine the L you have to take to live in England. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. But like, I honestly feel sorry for anyone who has to live in England. Like, that's just a big L. Big L. Big L. I'm not going to I've never in my life been like, I'm English. Woo! Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Woo! living in England never. I've never is an L. Ever. That, I've always said I'm, I love I'm being British. I'm, I'm Muslim first, then British, then Pakistani for me. But I feel like in Scotland they're like I'm Scottish. Muslim, Scottish. I'm like Scottish. <laughs> Scottish, Muslim, <laughs> legit because like because like I love like Scotland is the best. It's the best, honestly. It's the best. Just don't at me. All right then. So <laughs> any English guys wanting to marry this lass, it's a no. I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> now, on a serious note, like I understand that like these real top videos can touch sensitive issues sometimes yeah. and can um, offend people especially if you've got like a really delicate fragile ego and i'm here to say that sorry not sorry we're not sorry but also like it's light-hearted we kept yeah. it very light-hearted absolutely like, like these are our opinions they're just opinions and if you don't agree with them that's absolutely fine yeah. like we're not telling you this so that you agree with them yeah we're, we're just, just having a chat with you guys yeah. uh, and if anyone did get triggered by it especially if any guy got triggered by it to be honest these videos are not for you and also i feel like if you're getting triggered by it you might want to look in the mirror and yeah you know, you ask yourself why <laughs> look deep within why are you upset that you've been asked to learn how to use a washing machine yeah why <laughs> life skills why don't people? you know how to cook <laughs> <laughs> life skills <laughs> what's the time we could literally it's talk currently about um half past midnight Happy and Mars needs to get back to Glasgow. <laughs> I don't want to leave. I know. But it's been amazing having you here. Thank you. Honestly. Like, <laughs> Happy I, to be here. <laughs> I knew like Raw Talk would be so good with someone else because I get really bored of my own voice as well. But also someone else's opinion. Yeah. But I just didn't think it'd be this good. <laughs> she is just she's just such a natural and she's amazing <laughs> Mashallah, so Mashallah. please let us know what you want to see in the next one we're yeah. going to be filming again definitely so in inshallah. august hopefully yeah. uh, inshallah and yeah if you really enjoyed it you know what to do hit thumbs up and leave us a comment tell us like what all your opinions or what the things we spoke about yeah please what, interact it'll yeah. be fun what do you look for in a future spouse what do you think about men not knowing how to cook? <laughs> <laughs> um, could you actually? Interesting question is: If you're married, could your husband cook? And if he couldn't, did he learn? Yeah. And how much does he help? And how do you feel about that? And be honest, like it's not like he's gonna read it anyway. Yeah. But <laughs> we won't tell him. <laughs> we don't know your husbands. <laughs> <laughs> Different story. <laughs> oh, is that? <laughs> Pete. <laughs> or do we? <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> and that's oh, the God, cheat. Oh God, you go like that. <laughs> if we're just saying something, like, she does this all the time, she'll say something and not mean it in that way at all, but you're just like, like <laughs> and then it comes out of my mouth and then I hear it, right? And she just can't stop laughing. And then I'm just like, <laughs> oops, like, <laughs> what? <Wow. laughs> just to clarify. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in our next one.
Bye. Bye. <laughs>